In typical Leo fashion, expect drama. It doesn't look too serious, but it does look very entertaining, so I would want to be doing something to see what the fuck happens. <laughs> if you're excited to dive into what the astrology says about this full moon in Leo, make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you are always up to date with what the stars have in store for you. First we'll get into the overall vibe of this full moon, then we'll get into how I predict this playing out in relevant world charts. And if you're new here, first, hi, I am Marin. I do tropical astrology and I use traditional Hellenistic techniques. And if you want to learn from me, I do offer courses and other offerings below to help get you started. So this is a full moon in Leo happening on February 5th, 2023 at 1.28 p.m. Eastern time. Full moons always have the sun opposite the moon. So the sun is in Aquarius while the moon is in Leo. So pro tip is that if we're in Aquarius season, the full moon is going to be in Leo, the opposite sign. The new moon will be in Aquarius before that. So the sun is in Aquarius, the moon is in Leo, and they're both about halfway through their respective signs. They're at 16 degrees, which is almost midway because each sign is 30 degrees. And therefore the sun is in the second decade of Aquarius. Decans are third parts and they help us add a little bit more texture or details and nuance into what this full moon is representing. So this is associated with the Six of Swords tarot card, also known as Science, and it is a clever problem-solving card. It shows someone is crossing a river, he's on a little boat, so it's about getting from one point to another and having the correct problem-solving method to do so. So this is a card that shows clarity or things finally making sense on the next course of action. And the sun is already representing mentality or the intellectual side of this full moon, so it looks like intellectually we are realizing how to get from point A to point B and solve a particular problem. Now the moon is therefore in the opposite part of the zodiac in the second decan of Leo, which is associated with the Six of Wands tarot card called the Lord of Triumph, and it represents a victory. Now it's not the victory of the end of it all, it's more of the victory of one chapter or getting to like, okay, we made it to mile one, congrats. So the fear of this can be that you become complacent and you're like, oh, I did it, yay, we're done. Also that a little bit of power can give you a lot of pride. So there are pros and cons to this, but overall seems to be a full moon with themes of intellectually realizing that we're solving a problem, we have a solution, and emotionally feeling very gratified that we are on the way to that goal, even if we've already done a small part. Now this is squaring Uranus within one degree. Uranus is at 15 degrees of Taurus and it is the planet of disruption, chaos, volatility, and can be quite sudden. So there's a lot of electricity in this full moon. Full moons are already times of peak drama or things being revealed and a square to Uranus exacerbates this with a very sudden, very groundbreaking quality. It might be out of nowhere where we're solving a problem, we're needing to get to the bottom of an issue, and suddenly things come to light and are quite disruptive in our life. On the bright side, it can be very electric or exciting, but more often than not, a square, which is a hard aspect, does not show too bright of a side to Uranus. This is something that's a little more of a like breakdown kind of energy of like, oh my god, that's really how this is playing out. That really disrupts my plans and my night. So um, it throws shit around basically. It is like there's zero chill to this full moon. Zero chill. Leo already wants all the attention and uh, definitely looks like that is going to happen. If you have fixed sign placements around 15 to 16 degrees, as I do myself, in Leo in particular. It looks like a very engaging night, day into night, and uh, know that I am not targeting you all, do not say I'm coming for you, the universe is targeting you all, as it is throughout much of 2022 into 2023 with these middle of middle fixed sign placements. The sun being in Aquarius is in a Saturn ruled sign, and it's about 10 degrees away from Saturn already in Aquarius. And Saturn's a planet of seriousness and maturity, but 10 degrees is not super close, so it's not as if this is an incredibly do or full moon. It looks more like petty drama, like, okay, this is really disruptive, but it's not do or die and it's not the end of the world. It is not an eclipse. It's just like entertaining story time type shit. Luckily, Venus is exalted in Pisces right now, and Venus being exalted shows that social harmony and getting along with others is present throughout this. However, it is squaring Mars within a degree. So Venus squaring Mars can be very friction oriented. It can be flirty, but it can also be just kind of on the surface, bad that is a little more difficult. So it's not a rude chaos, it's more of a petty, gossipy chaos, because Venus in Pisces scoring Mars in Gemini is not like gut-wrenching chaos, it's more like, okay, you're petty fighting in the group chat. It's kind of interesting though, because Venus is scoring Mars within a degree, the Sun and Moon are scoring Uranus within a degree, and squares are around fighting in the same team, so fighting with your close friends or close family over petty shit is likely going to be the manifestation of this. Mercury is also conjunct 
Pluto and Capricorn, Mercury's communication, and Pluto adds seriousness, intensity, or crisis. So people are not mincing words. We're being very serious, very direct, and very concise with our speech, even if the matter at hand is not do or die. So do expect people to like throw some sharp words around and be very cutthroat with how they're speaking. I think the group chat or like the, the words being thrown around will be a uh, screenshot worthy. All of these alignments give off very precise, sharp, divisive energy. This full moon squaring Uranus, Venus squaring Mars, and having Mercury conjunct Pluto looks like these transits are cutting deep, but they're not necessarily unhealable in the long run. It does not look like the end of the world. Leo is fairly lighthearted. It does look like drama at a party and something that could be quite story time worthy in a few weeks or months down the line. I would avoid expecting anything near peaceful under this full moon. I would not schedule something like a family dinner or a friendly get together. However, if you do want to like go out to a party or something and you have no stake in it and you do not mind sitting back and watching this unfold, it could be quite entertaining. So I am not going to mind this day. I think that it could be kind of fun to watch, even if we are not trying to take part in it ourselves. Could be a good day to like work out, do anything creative. It could be quite an intense day if you're dating anyone or have to be around someone one on one. It could be kind of hot, but like pretty toxic. So just beware. Not the end of the world though, and I would not be worried. I would be entertained. <laughs> If you have any thoughts around this full moon in Leo and you do want to comment on how it's playing out in your chart, feel free to let me know down below as I myself am also targeted by this. <laughs> So for the U.S. in the way this is like impacting world charts, I don't see anything overwhelmingly relevant for the U.S. charts. Saturn is on the U.S. moon and the moon is ruling the eighth house of the market. So it could be restrictive financially, but obviously I mean, we're in the middle of difficult financial times. So I don't see this being anything surprising. Mars is on the U.S. descendant, highlighting tensions and partisan fighting, but this is not new and this is highlighted throughout a lot of the beginning of this year. So it's nothing where this full moon looks like it's political really. However, for Trump, this is more exciting in Donald Trump's chart. This is near his ascendant and his Mars. So I think Trump is going to be acting erratically and this is going to be disruptive with his career given Uranus is in his 10th house of career during this full moon. So it should be pretty active with that. But this is particularly active in Elon Musk's chart. This is within one degree of his north and his south node indicating a dramatic release or letting go of something in his life given the moon is literally right on his south node. Uranus exactly square the nodes in his chart definitely shows a sudden turning point here. But with Venus opposite his moon, I don't see this being inherently negative. Uh, Twitter's chart gives more information because this looks like a sudden but positive event for Twitter. The sun is right on Twitter's Venus and Venus is right on Twitter's Uranus, which is definitely very shocking, but it's not at all bad or challenging. So it's a disruption that's not really negative by any means, at least in the context of like online for Twitter. For Bitcoin, this is happening near Bitcoin's north and south node as well. The moon is near the south node and the south node represents decrease or letting go. So I would say it looks like pretty heavily dumping into this full moon as we usually do. Similar for ETH, it's right on ETH's Mercury, which looks disruptive. Dump into it and then pump after as we do with most of these. So I hope you enjoyed this. I would say bring out the popcorn, but don't expect anything too, too harsh or too bad. If you have any thoughts, do feel free to let me know down below or just like subscribe and let me know that you are enjoying this. By doing so, it does help out a lot. I will see you in the next one. Take care.